welcome back programmers in the today's section again we are going to talk about python advanced concepts so if you missed the first part so link is in the description this is the second part of advanced concept of python so let's begin and again we are going to use the book so the first one is python cookbook and the second one is expert python programming language in the previous video we saw how to unpack the list or tuple and some other stuff like how to use for loop in a single line how to short or program and so on so so in the today's section let's see some other concept so in the previous video the last we saw is record def foo def bar and this technique of stars so in the today's section we are going to start with this line star unpacking can also be useful when combined with certain kinds of string processing operations such as splitting for example so in the today's section first we are going to split some stuff so let's begin again i am going to use the repl.it this is the online web server ide and this is the best IDE you can even run tensorflow and numpy and so on so all of the API in this IDE link is in the description now let's begin in here I'm gonna first create a string list so let's say s equal to first I'm gonna create a string so I can show you how to split the string so a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p q r s t u n v w x y z so this is my string so if i wanna split this string so i'm gonna do is control space for auto suggestion print s dot we have function split So this is the function. Now let's run the code to show you the error. You can see when I print the s dot split, the error is it can't be split without argument. So if I add the argument like this, sorry, we have to add this argument in the comma. Let's try. Yes, you can see we got ABCD A to Z all of the alphabet. But when I add the this, but let's first see what split function do. So the basically split function do is it convert the string into a list. So all of this element in this string are converted into a list. Now first I'm gonna remove this and if I change this string to this is all in one code so you can see the output is like this oops we have to remove this too you can see the whole word is in the list with single single strings you can see this is all in one code so all of this word is created a string and full string is created a list so that's what split function do now string function take a two parameter separator and max split so separator is optional and max list is optional too separator specify the separators to use when we splitting the string by default any white space is an separator and max split is optional again specify how many split to do default value is minus one which is all occurrences so it means when i add the comma and use this special character and run this code you can see this is converted into a single string it remove all of this from the string but when i remove this you can see we got uh, this is all in one code 
and all of the string is different but when I add this you can see we got a single string now you can do this too if I change this into hashtag you can see the string is same but when I add the hashtag in here so you can see when I run this code the whole hashtag is removed and we got the different different string with the in a same list now if I add the one in here so you can see only one hashtag is removed and other is same as the string so if I change the value to 2 so you guess right the 2 hashtag is gonna remove and we got 3 hashtag in here so that's how we can use the split function now let's try this if I change into dollar shine or other special character like star and I remove the uh, dollar sign so let's try you can see the dollar sign is gone but we still got star and hashtag so let's try to remove star 2 and let's run this code now because we add the two special character it ain't removed anything so we have to add only one special character in here so let's try star so you can see the star is removed and created a whole new different string in single list and this is the split function now let's see what this code do so in here you can see line equal to nobody this special character star this special character minus two and unprivileged user and this string so I'm gonna copy this string to show you guys let's take s equal to this string now I'm gonna create a new variable uname field but field is a star field so all saved string or character is stored in the fields now I'm gonna use home dir this is the variable name and finally sh equal to s dot split and in here I'm gonna pass this colon in here so let's print the first now if you don't know how to unpack this string so check out my first video so when I print the uname obviously I'm gonna get a nobody because uname is first nobody and then we got a space because in here column is removed and we got a space so first I'm gonna print the S to show you guys what is the S you can see we got username equal to nobody because when I print S dot split and I'm gonna pass this column you can see we got this list and in this list first character is nobody so because we print uname which is in here so the first store uname string is nobody so that's why we got uname equal to nobody so now let's now print the fields okay we got star minus two minus two unprivileged user now why we got this because let's talk about it later because first I'm I have to show you guys home dir so home dir equal to obviously we are gonna get this string in here you can see this string var empty because home dir and sh is last so in sh it is gonna store the user bin false and in the home dir it is gonna store the var and empty so all other 
string is gonna save in the fields because we use the star so if you wanna learn more about this check out my first video so obviously if we print the sh so obviously it is gonna show us this user bin and false so that's how you can use this split function in here okay now let's do all of this stuff let's say r equal to a c m e and 50 and 1 2 3 dot 4 5 and again a tuple 12 80 2019 okay so this is the tuple in the tuple first is a c m e 50 1 2 3 4 dot 4 5 and again tuple 12 18 2019 okay so tell me guys what is the output of this code star again year equal to r so tell me when i print the name what is the output obviously output is SCME we got SCME but what is the output of this so let's try to print here but first let's print this so what is the output of this the output of this is 12 and 18 now why but let's first see the output of here so in here we end use the star so we can understand better okay the output of here obviously 2019 because here is store the last value because here is the last variable now what happened to this when i print this this is giving us the 12 and 8 only 18 only so what happened with this 15 and 1 2 3 dot 4 5 so there is a certain similarity between star and packing and list processing feature of various functional languages for example if you have a list you can easily split in into head and tail components like this but what happened to this element so basically name equal to SME year equal to 2019 but this is stored so first this line equal to first 15 and 1 2 3 dot 4 5 but then the value of change of this line because of we use this line again in here so the value is changed into 12 and 18 so now the value of this again is 12 and 18 so that's why if we print this again so we are gonna get the 12 and 18 but if we change the variable name in here like this uh, v so you can see we got 12 and 18 here too but if we print the v we are gonna get this value you can see we got 15 1 2 3 dot 4 5 so that's how star use in here you can see head equal to only one because it stores the first element and tail equal to all of these other elements now let's create a function let's say def sum you take a argument item and in this function h e a d and star tail equal to item so and we are gonna return the head plus sum of again we are gonna call this function and we are gonna pass the tail but in condition if tail 
सॉरी इफ टेल एल्स एच ई एडी हेड एंड लेट्स से आइटम इक्वल टू दिस वन टेन सेवन फोर फाइव एंड नाइन बट वेन वी रन दिस फंक्शन एंड पास दी आइटम्स सो लेट्स प्रिंट दिस I have to store the variable a equal to sue sum function, and now we are going to use the print to store print the a. You can see we got 36. Now why? One could imagine writing a function that perform a such splitting in order to carry out some of kind of recursive algorithm. So we just used. the recursive function so before seeing this function what do let's see what is recursive because in this function the author used the recursive for example let's say this is the function recursive and in this function i'm going to just print the recursive and then I'm gonna call this function again in here, and then I'm gonna call this function in the main class, or you can say out of the function. So let's call the recursive R E C. So this function are gonna call this function again and again because you can see R E C is a function, and I just print the recursive. So again, this function call R E C, which is the again R E C, which print the recursive. So this is gonna print again and again recursive. You can see so many time it prints the recursive, but at the last, at the end of the point, previous line repeated nine nine two more times. So this is the error because this is the infinite loop. So we have to stop this. So let's try this. Let's pass the n. Let's say n equal to here one, and n equal to n plus one. Let's run this code. Oops! First we print the n, and here again we are gonna pass the n. You can see it. Create the integer value one two three four five six seven eight nine two nine nine six. So let's create a condition here. If n less than nine hundred, so then call the R E C n. Or else, else. Just print the end. Okay. So you can see it create again a lots of integer to the nine hundred and sorry only eight nine nine time because if we enter equal to your less than or equal to so it create nine hundred time. You can see nine hundred time and then it stop. that's how you can use the recursive and that's how you can create a number increment system without for loop now let's create a function that find a factorial with recursive function so let's say def fact and again we are going to pass the x in here to find the factorial so before seeing the recursive factorial you can see the common factorial code in here factorial equal to 1 start with 1 number equal to let's say we have to find 7 of number of factorial so 7 of number of factorial is 5040 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 1 equal to this number now let's do a condition here so what if factorial is 1 so we have to return 1 so let's say if x equal to equal to 1 return simply we are going to return the 1 and in the else condition we are going to return the return 
x into this x into fact again we are gonna call this function and in here we're gonna pass the x minus 1 and let's run this code to show you guys how it's work first I'm gonna take a variable f equal to fact and I'm gonna pass this 7 because we know what is the output of 7 and then we are gonna print the f let's run this code you can see we got 5040 now how it's work first of all it check is x equal to equal to 1 if yes it returns the 1 so let's try to add 1 you can see we got 1 so first condition is true but let's try 2 now in here we pass the 2 so answer is 2 because 2 into 1 is 2 so this is our function fact x and it returns the x into fact minus 1 x minus 1 so let's pass this 7 to understand the output we got 5040 you can see 7 into 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 1 equal to 5040 so what he we have to do is we have to first check the x x equal to 7 and we have to increment the value 654321 and multiply that value okay so that's what this function do you can see in here x minus 1 it means this is the in sorry decrement the value let's say x equal to 7 so first in here the x is 7 so let's say x equal to in here x equal to 7 so first x equal to 7 and then we are returning x into fact x minus 1 again we are calling this function now this is the first time x equal to 7 and then we are gonna returning the x into fact x minus 1 so again this is function is gonna call and in here x minus 1 equal to now x is 7 6 so let's say x equal to 6 so first this return this 7 into 6 so 7 into 6 is 42 so let's say this is the 42 we got first this return the 42 and then second x equal to 6 so 6 into fact x minus 1 so 6 into 5 30 okay we got 30 and so on so it is returning the value x into fact x minus 1 and this is decrement the value till 1 and then this is gonna run sorry this is if x equal to equal to 1 return 1 so when x equal to equal to 1 it is gonna returning the 1 and that's how we got 5040 okay now that we know what is recursive now let's talk about what is single line if else condition so this is our program and in here we are gonna do single line if else condition so let's say a equal to 10 and b equal to 20 so in this function you can see this is only make a condition if tell else head so same in here let's say c equal to we are gonna return the a if a else b so what is mean let's first print the sorry not in here let's just print the value of c in here so in here you can see if a else b so what it means it means if a has value return a or else return b if a has value return a else return b so is a has value yes a has a value so obviously it is gonna returning the a this is gonna returning the a so that's why we got 10 or if we change the value of a into 0 so you can see we got a 20 because a is null now 
a the value of a is zero so that's why it returns the b so now you got the point we can do this too if a equal to equal to 10 or b you can see if a equal to equal to 10 so return a else return b let's run you can see we got 20 because a equal to equal to not 10 let's try 10 you can see we got 10 in here because a equal to equal to 10 and if we change the value of a in here b you can see we got 20 because we are returning the b okay so that's what if else condition 2 and you can even create a equation in here like less than greater than whatever you want and even you can do is you can return the a plus 10 so now a has value so it is gonna return 10 but i'm gonna returning the a plus 5 so it is gonna check is a equal to equal to 10 plus 5 no this is not 15 so that's why it return b so that is it for if else condition now let's talk about this in this function now you got the point def sums of item head and tail equal to item return head plus sum of tail if a tail else head so whoever made this function is too much smart because it returns the sum of this list you can see the sum of this list 1 plus 10 plus 7 plus 4 plus 9 plus 5 equal to 36 so let's change the value let's say 5 and 5 so what is the sum of this list obviously 10 so we got 10 so now how this is work first i'm gonna remove this 5 and 5 and return in this 1 10 7 4 5 and 9 now first of all head equal to 1 and tail equal to 10 7 4 9 you can do the math in here because head equal to you can see first element and then tail equal to other element now when we return the head plus 1 because head equal to 1 and we are returning sum of tail so 1 plus because first head is 1 and then again head is we are gonna call this function now again head is 10 because 1 is returned in here again call the function we are passing this tail so the tail is 10 7 4 9 so because of this tail we are passing in here so again head equal to this 10 in here and again tail equal to 7 4 5 9 so again we are returning the head plus sum so again in here head equal to 10 so we are returning head again we are gonna call this function now this time head equal to 7 because in here you can see we are passing the tail so because of the tail now tail is item item equal head and tail equal to item so head equal to first element 7 and tail equal to 7 4 and 9 so again we got head equal to 7 so now 1 plus 10 plus 7 and so on so we got head equal to 4 head equal to 5 and head equal to 9 and in the last tail value is nothing zero null so that's where if else condition do that stuff so you can see in here if tail else head if tail has value return tail else return head so you can see tail has no value so it is returning nine so that's why the last value is nine we got nine in here because of the if else condition if tail if tail has value return the tail so you can see all of this head and tail values if you wanna see more detail about it this is the image where i equation when i create all of the equation you can see in here what 
it returns whenever call the function and what it returns in the last so that's what recursive function and single line if else condition i know this is very hard for you but this is the advanced topic okay now that we got the def some item hair tail and this stuff now let's talk about iterators and generators an iterator is nothing more than a container object that implements the iterator protocol it based on two method next which return the next item of the container and iter which is the return iterator itself so let's first i'm going to remove all of this stuff i equal to iter and in iter i'm going to pass the a b c and when i'm print the i so you can see you got a object at 0x this is the address of the object of iter i okay but what if i print the i dot next so whenever i print i dot next you can see we got a error oops in here we have to pass the i in the parameter so let's pass the i in here you can see we got a in here this book use i dot next but it isn't work in my ide so i have to use i is the parameter so let's try again whenever i print the next so let's try again print next and again i'm going to pass the i so you can see now the value is change now it say stop iteration so let's say pass the value in the list let's try this a b and c you can see you got a and b because now we are passing the value in the list okay now whenever we print again this is going to print the next value of i so whenever i print next and i you can see we got c let's say c you can see we got c but when i copy this and print this again you can see we got error hold on a second you can see we got error stop iteration because there is nothing more than c so that's how iteration works okay now let's create a class class my iterator my itr tr or i'm going to short it my itr and in here but first you can see when the sequence is executed a stop iteration exception is read in here you can see whenever we print the i dot next again it stop the iteration because there is nothing more than this value it make iteration compatible with loops since they catch this exception to stop cycling to create a custom iterator a class with next method can be written as long as it provides the special method iter that returns an it stands of iterator and we are going to inherit with this class with object now what is object object is a global variable by default it is bound to built in class which is the root of the type hierarchy or you can say hierarchy this leads to the interesting property that you can take any built in type and use the basis property to reach the type called object everything built in that isn't keyword or operator is an identifier so this is my class and i'm going to first pass the class and i'm going to print the my itr you can see this is the main class of my itr when i print the x equal to my itr is object and i'm going to print the x only you can see we got a object at address of this address and this is the object of my itr okay 
I'm gonna create another video for object oriented programming but this is just for an example okay now I'm gonna create a instructor or you can say constructor so def init and then I'm gonna pass this self obviously and another object which is step and obviously I'm gonna do is self dot step equal to step and then I'm gonna create another function def next self and I'm gonna return the next level by doing this if self dot step equal to equal to zero and I'm gonna do is raise now what is raise it controls the error so it means you can do is you can type the error in here you can type any error like you can't divide number with zero or whatever error you know what is this error stop iteration when we run this program you know we got that error before whenever I use the next again and again this error you can see stop iteration so I raise the error I'm gonna show you guys let's say I equal to input and again I'm gonna call the if else condition if I equal to equal to zero I'm gonna raise the error so first let's see the error so I'm gonna comment it out so uh, what I'm gonna do d equal to I'm gonna take a two number from user so n1 and n2 equal to input and then I'm gonna do is n1 divide n2 okay so this is a simple whenever I run this code and add the value let's say 2 and 3 you can see we got oops first I have to convert this into integer let's do this quickly very fast and then I'm gonna simply print the D let's add 5 4 you can see we got 1.25 5 divided 4 equal to 1.25 but what if I add the value 5 and 0 you can see we got error division by 0 0 division error so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna first comment it remove the comment and I'm gonna pass the error in here okay so this is the error sorry I entered the wrong text in here zero division error and in here I'm gonna pass the n2 okay so this is just an uh, example and else I'm gonna print the you can either use the try and exception but this is just for example for raise this keyword and this error Okay, I'm gonna print the D and I'm not gonna print in here because we want to see the error okay now let's add 5 4 and 3 you can see we got error oops I accidentally removed the wrong line okay run this code again let's say 4 and 3 you can see we got 1.333 but whenever I run this code again and enter 4 and 0 you can see we got error zero division error so it stored in raise so whenever I print the raise sorry we can't print the raise we just do is control only store the error in this keyword so that's how we can use the raise it's not important because in automatically we got zero division error in here okay if sleep self dot step equal to equal to zero 
raise stop iteration it is gonna give us the error stop iteration and again you can see whenever i add the n2 equal to 2 so again this is gonna give us this error zero division error you can see when i enter 4 and 2 you can see you got error zero division and we know this isn't true for we can divide 4 into 2 sorry 4 divided 2 but we use the raise in here so that's why we got an error so same as here we are stop iteration error whenever self dot step equal to 0 okay and then we are gonna decrement the self dot step not in this if condition okay self dot step minus equal to 1 okay self dot step minus equal to 1 if this condition is true so this is gonna give us an error and then self dot step minus equal to 1 okay and let's just simply return the self dot step now let's use the iter function now what is iter function itr self and in here so return returns an instance of iterator you can see return it iterators itself so let's return this self now what we are gonna do we are gonna create a for loop for i in my itr this is the function name and then we are gonna pass the for now why for because you can see in here in constructor we have to pass one parameter if we didn't pass the parameter we got the error you can see the error sorry this isn't error first we have to do is go in the for loop and print the i now let's see the error in it missing one required positional argument step so let's add this step let's say i want to step add a 5 so we got the error iter returns a non iterator of type my iter troll <laughs> obviously this is my iterator so we are gonna solve this error in the next video so you can see come in my channel again and again that's my strategy okay so we are gonna solve this error in the next video because this video is too long for now so that is it for today's guys if you like this video please like this video share this video to other programmer subscribe to my youtube channel we are gonna see in the next video of all of this trough iterator generator and so on so and you can see we are gonna see keeping the last n item and other advanced concept so that is it for today's guys comment for the next video see you guys in the next video thank you